Carlos Lachlan and the Oregon running backs. We got to hear from Carlos Lachlan uh, the first time that the reporters got to kind of meet him and talk with him since he took the job at Oregon coming over from Western Kentucky. And we also got to talk to Byron Carwell, who is the, as weird as it is to say, the most experienced back for Oregon, at least, you know, taking carries at Oregon as a duck. No, Whittington comes over from Western Kentucky and the Ducks also have Sean Dollars. So before we talk about some of these guys, Dylan, I just got to say, I, I love talking to Carlos Lachlan. I mean, I, I posted that video the other day when he was talking about just how passionate he is about football. And then I think what's really struck a lot of fans and definitely stuck with me is just how he's trying to kind of have a nod to, to the history of, of Oregon football and just, you know, respect to the greats that have come before him, whether it be Gary Campbell or awesome running backs like D'Anthony Thomas, Lil Michael James, Kenyon Barner. He, he talked about how that, how those guys are the standard and that's ultimately what he's holding himself to and what he's chasing. Yeah, that was awesome to hear just because, you know, obviously I don't think the the running back group has really taken a step down too far from that standard. CJ Verdell and Travis Dye, I think, did a really good job of of holding that. Obviously, they're two of the five leading rushers in program history. Um, but the fact that he's looking back on the alumni and seeing where the success is, because Gary Campbell was a coach for 30 plus years, I think starting from the 80s to 2016, long, long time. He was the longest tenured, you know, assistant coach in the FBS when he when he ended up leaving in 2016 so tons of experience he's coached so many incredible players there's nobody in this program um that is better for Carlos Lachlan to learn from uh, at his position now than than Gary Campbell and you know now there's there's so much potential for guys like Byron Cardwell and Sean Dollars and uh Noah Whittington especially with Whittington you know having that experience with with Lachlan and now uh, Whittington can share that with Byron Cardwell and Sean Dollar is just what his what he called military style type of coaching is, uh, where he said, I'm not going to use profanity at him, but I'll get into you a little bit. Um, yeah, I loved everything that he said. His passion just burst through um, like that was the most evident passion that I've seen from a coach is not saying that any of them didn't have passion because they all do in their own ways. But Carlos Lachlan, you could just see it in his eyes. That man loves what he does. And I, he loves his players and he loves football. And it's just it's so awesome that, you know, I feel like he's kind of the new Aaron Feld in terms of the energy. Like, it, it seems like he's the guy that's going to keep that going a little bit. He just has such a great story. Uh, I don't want to reiterate too much of it, but I didn't even know. And this is probably on me for not doing some more research on the guy, but that he had he had a background uh, in, in law enforcement. He said that he, he was a, an undrafted free agent with the Giants and then he got hurt. So he ended up playing some arena football. And then after that, he he had uh, various jobs. Like he was a correctional officer. He was a police officer. Uh, and then he also said they did some special detail work with the government. So like this guy just has a super diverse background. And then he was also talking about just the, the drive that he's carrying himself with saying, quote, I still work like I'm the guy who's showing up at Memphis every day, sleeping in my car, changing in the bathroom in hopes of just getting a locker and another shirt. So he's made it to, I don't want to say the pinnacle of the sport because a lot of people view that as the NFL and rightly so, but just because of the previous programs that he's worked at, Florida State was obviously a pretty historic one for him to have the shot to, to coach these Oregon backs that are super talented, but largely unproven and oozing with potential. It really feels like he's the, the right guy to, to take this room a, a step forward um, just because of the the way he's he's mentioned that he's approaching it and the guys that he has to work with. Well, he would definitely tell you that too. Just because you know, I remember him saying that you know every day I'm gonna I'm gonna go into this job thinking that I'm the best developer of this job, and he's like, other guys will say it, and I know they're wrong. I'm the I'm the best developer of it, and I'm, I'm not gonna lie. When Oregon first hired him, and I was looking at his resume, coming from Western Kentucky, such an air raid, you know, pass heavy emphasis on the heavy offense um i was really interested in, in you know just what that was going to be like for him in that transition just going from such a you know a lopsided offensive scheme to something that's going to be more balanced it sounds like with oregon and um you know i, I feel like the personnel is going to be just as good as he's had at memphis you know he's coached guys like antonio gibson who's you know balling out with the washington commanders now gotta watch myself 
Um, but he's he's done such a phenomenal job with recruiting. He's done a phenomenal job just getting the most out of his guys, particularly Sean Dollars. We talked about that a little bit on the site. I wrote about how he's starting to stand out, emerge in spring. Coaches won't tell you, you know, this guy's standing out already. Like we're only nine practices in, but you know, when you ask him about Sean Dollars and you ask Dan Landing about Sean Dollars, like everybody it, there's a different energy around the player that he is, and I feel like that's credit to Carlos Lachlan and the energy that he's putting into these guys. We've already talked a, a pretty heavy amount about Byron Carwell. The last thing that I just wanted to say about him was that, I mean, just, just the physicality, even though we were inside yesterday, I felt like our access was better just in terms of the proximity to the guys. And and I heard firsthand, you know, Lachlan getting into Carwell uh, and some of these other backs. So that kind of got me fired up, but I saw Carwell just truck through a guy. So you love to see the, the physicality but let's talk about dollars a little bit in Whittington because they're kind of the guys that we don't know as much about. Um, I feel like Noah Whittington has a little bit of a slighter frame, uh, but he's, he's really well built. And I think that the way that he's getting described, you know, very explosive runs really hard plays with a different type of effort. You can coach the details with a guy like him. That's what Dan Lanning was saying. Carlos Lachlan saying he's extremely talented. And then I saw him make a really nice cut yesterday to, to miss a defender. So I'm excited to see see what Whittington can do, especially because he's a later addition. But the fact that he has that familiarity with Coach Lachlan, much like Christian Gonzalez has with Demetrius Martin, I think things like that kind of give me some confidence that this is going to be a smoother transition than, than you would maybe expect at other schools because there's kind of some of these crossover guys, if you can call them that. Yeah, absolutely. I think Whittington was such an interesting um, addition for Oregon you know, I, I think we talked about it a little bit um, during right before the spring and like around National Signing Day. Like we thought Oregon really needed a veteran running back in that room. Um, and no Whittington provides that. And yeah, you said he's a smaller frame, but you look at his numbers. They're not pedestrian by any means. And I did obviously say it's a pass heavy offense, but they average 6.1 yards a carry. He got 101 touches, um, you know, 617 yards, two touchdowns. Um, and yeah, he's got a good amount more than than any other running back. Um, you know, at Oregon on the rest of the room at Western Kentucky, obviously Byron Cardwell has got the most out of any returner, but Sean Dollars is such an X factor, I think, because we've seen him in special teams. We've seen him kind of late in games early in his career. And then the Pac-12 championship, he comes in and it's like, he's part of the rotation. And I was at that game and I was like, well, where'd, where'd this come from? Um, you know, he had, I think eight carries and he's running, running really hard. It looked like he, had, he hadn't missed a beat. And that's what Byron Cardwell just said on Tuesday that you watch him out there. It looks like he didn't even hurt his knee, um, which is, you know, when you look at a running back suffering a serious knee injury that held him out from, I think it was last spring. Uh, and we never saw him last year. Um, you know, and the fact that he's looking like nothing ever happened, that's a really good sign. And it seems like he's on a mission to, you know, prove everybody wrong. No doubt about it. It's it's, you can see the excitement, why people have excitement about this running back room. Despite all the youth, um, I think that Carlos Lawson kind of summed it up. He was saying all three together will have something special with those three. So, you know, we're going to have our eye close or have a close eye on those running backs and what Carlos Lawson can do working with Kenny Dillingham and the rest of the Oregon offensive staff.